In this uh, example, they want to approximate the derivative of the point, partial derivative, when we only know the control diagram. So we used to do in calculus one something like this when we only had the graph, and they would ask us to approximate derivative of this point. Do you remember what we used to do for that if it was just 2D? What was derivative at this point? Well, we would use the formula. The formula was something like that. Same idea here. Derivative of f with respect to x, you add a little bit of change to x and divide on that change. So you take the run versus rise idea into 3D. That's exactly what we used to do before. So now our height is just a third dimensional object. Now it's a mountain instead of two dimensional. So what we did before was we would take another point, if you remember, then we would take difference of heights. So it's going to be y2 minus y1. Sometimes we would do y1 minus y0. And then difference over difference of input. So f prime would be approximately y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. That's the same thing as this h. We did use this definition too as derivative and x plus h, there was just no y in it. There was nothing here, basically. This is how it was originally in one dimension. Now, let's see how we're going to do it here. Remember that those lines you see are level co curves, right? So it's contour diagrams. Again, I will show you, like I showed in class many times and in other videos, these animations, because I just found them pretty being pretty cool. Heights here are in those Heights are designed to show you by those contour lines, level curves, right? So exactly something like that. And it's not necessarily going up and down all the time. Maybe it's, it's not necessarily a pit or a mountain. Sometimes uh, it's just something going up or going down. The height is increasing all the time and decreasing. What do you think we have here? Did you first try to see the numbers on each line and see the pattern? Uh, four, six, eight, la, 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 like so. Seems like we're hiking up the more we go to the right bottom corner, right? We're hiking up because the height is getting higher. The height is getting higher. That's a weird phrase to say. The numbers are getting larger. So if those are thousands of kilometers, right? Then you're hiking up. When you go to the right and down, like so, that is what... Uh, south east right hiking up okay knowing that keep that in mind let's find what we actually asked to find let's find partial derivative approximate partial derivative with respect to x at one and three well step one if you don't know how to start just find the point at least what's your point <laughs> of one and three let me try to locate it since uh, i know this is two then this is one and then one two three okay this is the point p Let's call it P. It's not, it was not called P originally. I'll call P. P uh, 1 and 3. So they asked us, just like in this picture in 2D, to find the derivative. Before, we did not ask what kind of derivative, because the input was only 1. Uh, F would depend on X. Simple as that. But now, F depends on X and Y, because this height, let me show you, this height, and this height and all other heights are now depending on x and y. Each location of the point gives you different height of the mountain. So let's see. If we're taking derivative with respect to x, y is fixed. It's the same idea well, as always with partial derivative. The other variable is fixed. It's a constant. For the y derivative, for the partial derivative with respect to y, x is fixed like so okay so we know y is fixed for this one so we don't bother by we're not bothered by that x is keep changing though like so x is growing right from smaller to bigger okay finally let's just basically build a formula for this problem the formula will be partial derivative with respect to f or partial derivative of function f with respect to x equals let's do approximate i don't want to use limits approximate it will give you equal sign if you actually use limits okay dividing by h 
h will be small change with x. It can be any small change. You can do this one. You can do this one. The smaller the better. But uh, usually it's convenient to use this change where the height will be easy to calculate. So if I choose this kind of change, I kind of like what this height is. Is it 11 because it's between 10 and 12? Is it 11.3? Hard to know. So it will be clever to use this change. This change. Because I know height of the next point and the previous point. P is the original point. Uh, let's call, call M is the next point, right? So P was the original point. It had coordinates 1, 3. Now from P we're going to M. M has a new coordinate. What is this? This is like 3.2. 3.2. And the height is the same. Do you know why? Can you tell me? Exactly, because we decide to fix y. Remember, we're fixing y. It's a constant, right? Constant. Okay, so now we know that we need to take outputs, difference of outputs, minus difference of inputs. That is the idea. What kind of outputs and inputs we should use? 3 minus 3? And 3.2 minus 1? Is this what I'm talking about? Uh, no. That will be 0. <laughs> because we don't take into account the heights. Uh, of course it will be 0 because 3 and 3 are the same. That's the, exactly the point of partial derivatives. The denominator is good. H uh, indicates the change of inputs. What is that small change we have? I can even illustrate. This change is this in yellow. The change is happening from 1 to uh, 3.2. So from 1 to 3.2, this is 2.2. Let me use another color. 2.2. That's what we have here. Now, we need to figure out different outputs. Output outputs for the three-dimensional objects are heights. So F... F depends on input X and input Y. So, what is, let me write down here, what is F at 1, 3? And what is F at 3, 2? 3.2, 3. Are they approximate? If we would choose some random points, we would have to approximate them. But we were smart enough to choose kind of clever points. And now we know the exact answer. At this point P, which line are we using? And I'm talking about the uh, level curves. Which curve we're using? Height 10. So original one is 10. And then M, point M. Let me go point P. Point M. Point M has the height 12. Exactly. And we even know it that it's exactly 12. We always do next minus previous one, so it's going to be 12 minus 10, and this is the answer. Uh, it's exactly 2 over 2.2. .2. I would keep it like that, because it's kind of like it's a smart, nice answer. But if you want to know, it's approximately 1, uh, but it's less than 1, right? So it's 0 0.9091. This is the nice approximate answer. What can you tell about the hike? Uh, the derivative end up to be positive. So are we hacking up or down? Seems like we're hacking up. The derivative is small, so it's going to be a pleasant hike, but it's positive. So it's a pleasant, nice hike. But we expected that. Didn't you see it from the beginning? If we're going from P to M, I'm going up. I started at the level 10. And now I'm going to 12, and after this I will go to 14 if I don't change the direction. So I'm hiking up. It's a nice hike, uh, pleasant hike. Do you want to practice another point? Uh, how about, not another point, the same point, but derivative with respect to y at 1, 3. How about that? Idea is going to be, is going to be the same. Let's choose another color. Choose this point P and something so point p is fixed it's the same point choose a convenient point 
higher than p. In our case, before it was to the right because it's derivative with respect to x, but higher will be with respect to y, right? So let's do comp. What's, what other letters do we know? T, M, K, K. I like K. K is good. Here's point K. What is the coordinates K has? K now has the same input because when we're taking derivative with respect to y, x is fixed, right? I wrote it here. x is fixed. x is constant. In this case, x is 1 all the time. But then output is for y. It's not output. That is your input y. It's like 5.7. I don't know. 5.7 approximately, right? Is this point. Now we're taking this change, this is my h, change here, don't move, change for y, it's a small change k, so that's not h anymore, they call it k in this formula, I always call it h, h is a nice reserve letter for small changes, h and k, small change, you don't want to go too far, because everything can be changed if you go too far. So it's a small convenient change. And now we're just looking at this. We're looking at height at k, 8, minus height at p, still 10, nothing changed there. And we're dividing by k. k is a different, a small change we have. So derivative of f with respect to y will be change in y you just either calculate it right away or find a difference 5.7 minus whatever was the original uh, y that is 3 5.7 minus 3 5.7 minus 3 that's change in y and then change in outputs that is 8 minus 10 wait we're getting a negative number let's see if it matches our prediction prediction if I'm going up, am I hiking up or hiking down? Well, well, we were at 10. Now we're going to 8. After this, we're going to 6. We're hiking down. So it will be a negative number. Probably still small because the hike seems to be pleasant. But we're hiking down. Derivative should be negative with respect to y. Unlike we had positive with respect to x. So that's going to be minus 2. Because I forgot to calculate it in my calculator. Minus 2 over 2.3. 2 uh, so what is that? 2 divided, not multiply, divided by 2.3 is approximately negative 0 0.8696. See, it's a small negative number. Hike is still very pleasant. It's actually more or less the same number, to be honest. It's just negative. But it's pretty close to each other. So hike is very pleasant and we're going down hill. Down hill. I guess I should like clarify that. <laughs> Let me write down the coordinates and information of the point K. So you have nice visualization and information. Point K. So you have good notes basically. At point K, we had the same input one that's important. But new output, the output I just randomly or like tried my best to approximate 5.7. 5.7. So see the difference. We had different axes. Now we have different y's, right? And the height was exactly known. It was 8. It's a level curve. The level curve was signed. And it says, oh, on k, you actually are at the level 8. And that's how you're working on these problems. It's actually pretty interesting, pretty clever, clever, uh, very enjoyable uh, until you get it on the exam, of course. So then it's kind of hard. I feel like these problems are not good for exams. Uh, it's too easy to mess up if you panic. And I feel like it's not fair to give it to students on the test. So I try to avoid giving those graphs on the test. If you panic, you forget what's going on. It's hard to answer this question. But what I like you to understand is this comparison between 2D and 3D. That's very important that we're going from calculus 1 to calculus 3, three-dimensional and upper-dimensional world. 
uh, pretty fast. We're developing all the same ideas we learned in calculus one, limits, derivatives, chain rule, and all of that in higher dimensions. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.